You can probably tell from my voice that I have a bit of a cold. Somehow last week, a virus entered my system despite my best efforts to avoid germs and to boost my immune system. As a result, my left ear is clogged up, <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat, I don't have the energy or creativity I normally have, and I, frankly, I'm feeling pretty cranky. Did you know that organizations can get viruses too? This is what happens when they have habits or attitudes or ways of doing things that actually get in the way of helping to execute the strategy. One example would be a pretty terrific PR agency that I do work with. They have a very strong culture, and people love working there. So what's the problem? They have a virus that I call not invented here. They have a very hard time accepting people into their organization who didn't grow up inside it or who just have a different way of doing things or a different style. Now, you wouldn't think that that was such a big problem, except that the world is changing around them. And unless they can bring in new blood, new ideas, frankly, even new styles, where people can talk more freely about things, they're going to run into some problems strategically and in terms of execution going into the future. Chances are good that you have an organizational virus as well. These viruses can take place at the enterprise level or at the project team level, basically anywhere that a group of people are trying to drive a strategy forward, trying to execute on a plan, and yet it's not quite working. What you'll find is that you can have viruses, and they don't really bother you so much when the economy is growing and the organization is growing and there's lots of resources to make things go forward. But when things get tough, you're trying to make a change happen, uh, you've got limited resources, those things that want to glitch up the system really can derail you. Let me give you a great example that might help to drive this organizational virus idea home for you. A couple of years ago, we were dealing with a very large global financial institution. It had grown quite rapidly through acquisition. And the CEO who was running the place when we were there, as well as most of his direct reports, had been involved with this acquisition strategy. They were used to very high returns, and they wanted to keep that going. Of course, the acquisition strategy had to turn to a more organic strategy over time. They'd bought up a lot of the good properties. They were already huge. They were already everywhere. They really had to, instead of acquire companies, turn to knitting together the organization. They needed to put systems in place, put structures in place, start to create a global leadership brand. They needed to be concerned about corporate governance issues as they would play out in all these different global uh, societies and cultures. They really needed to be thinking about how is this empire going to be coming together instead of staying as an archipelago of disconnected islands. They didn't do that. Uh, one, they really thought of themselves as corporate raiders, and uh, that self-identity was really important to the problem. Secondly, I think that they really didn't value this organization building uh, requirement. I think that they thought that that was something that you know managers did, not uh, you know really spiffy corporate raiders. So as a result of this uh, corporate virus that I will call arrogance, they kept, they pushed their requirements down into an organization and demanded the same kinds of returns and behaviors from people out in the field that they had, uh, that had made them very successful at the acquisitions process. And as a result, the only questions that were ever asked in the chain of command were, uh, you know, where's the money as opposed to how did you make the money? And that attitude, uh, resulted in a lot of trouble in the field. They had lawsuits, they got in trouble with regulators, they even got kicked out of one country. Um, and in general, they so tarnished their reputation that the only way to recover it was to get rid of the CEO. So the company ran into trouble, the CEO ran into trouble, and the only uh, way that they were actually saved was by a large cash infusion by some external money people. That's a corporate virus. That's what can happen. And this place was filled with very smart people. It wasn't a question of lack of intellectual understanding. It was a virus that got in the way. OK, so let's say the worst has happened. You've got a virus. The question becomes, can you get rid of it? And the answer is, absolutely. We deal with viruses in organizations all the time. And what we find is that they're very easy to diagnose. Typically, if you ask a bunch of people in an organization, what gets in the way of work being done here? in the way that it needs to be done for great execution, the answers are very clear. The only people who don't get it are the ones who've got their heads stuck in the sand. So getting rid of a virus is basically being willing to understand what the issues are and then being willing to change.